Hello everyone, this is Paul from Val Pal, and with me I have Dave. Uh, I've known Dave for a, a long time. Uh, we've seen him for multiple orthopedic issues, but most recently he's been having some shoulder discomfort. And what I want to do today is go through a little evaluation just to show you what, um, how we get to the diagnosis that we get to and what the plan is for him moving forward. So Dave, how old are you? 70 years old. 70 years old, and how long has this shoulder been bothering you? The shoulder has been bothering me on and off for at least three years. Okay. And uh, lately, what have been the biggest complaints? What is the hardest thing for you to do? My biggest problem right now is I have no strength lifting anything above my shoulder height. And I cannot put things away that I normally would put away. Can't take a full quart of milk out of the fridge without, you know, stressing about that okay uh, so i have no strength left in the in the shoulder yeah. now what about sleeping at night any pain with i have a the problem if i'm sleeping on that side with it aggravating okay the shoulder so it can wake you up a little bit yes, or keep you keep you from getting to sleep absolutely um any uh, constant numbness or tingling going down the arm no okay great um any headaches or neck pain at this no, time no okay so what I'll do is I'm going to take him through some active range of motion first, just get an idea on how he's doing, and then uh, we'll get into some passive range, check his strength out, do a couple special tests, and we'll see if we can come to a diagnosis. Okay, so the first thing I'd like you to do is I'd like you to take those arms and I'd like you to lift them up overhead. If the other one goes all the way, that's fine. Let's see how far we get. So we have 90 degrees. What stops you from going up, pain or weakness? <laughs> weakness and pain. Okay, and bring those arms back down. Now I'm going to ask you to go out to the side like this, over the top. Notice he's hiking over here. That one, will it go higher? Okay, good. Excellent. So we don't quite get to 90 degrees here, and I'll let you bring it down. Okay. That's tough, sorry. Now I'm going to ask you to reach behind your head. So notice what he did here is he brought his hand out in front of him to get it over the top and then bring his elbow back rather than go out to the side. So we'll let that arm down. Let's try it on the other side. Let's see how you do it. <clears throat> Notice how he takes it out to the side like that, okay? So um, the quality just isn't really good on this side. Um, we're going to ask him to reach up behind his back. And he can pull his hand up against his back, but he's not able to really get it away from there. Painful? Uh, a little in here. Okay. How about weakness? Yes. You feel weak there too. Yes. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to let that arm down. We've already assessed his cervical spine and cleared his cervical spine. So the first thing I want to do is I want to see if maybe he has a frozen shoulder. Okay, so if he can only get to 90 degrees with flexion, I shouldn't really be able to get him past that. Now, as I go up, I keep this other hand on the glenohumeral joint back here. Noticing some crepitus, it's getting a little painful. Okay, a little bit of noise in there, but not terrible. I'm going to lift him out to the side. Any pain there? So. Okay, right there. So I'm able to get further than he was a while ago. I want to take a look at his external rotation, which is usually the most limited with adhesive capsulitis. And that's not bad. And we're going to check out his internal rotation. Not bad. So his glenohumeral mobility isn't terrible, but there is some crepitus in there. And I, one has to wonder if he has some glenohumeral joint arthritis. So I'm going to check his strength next. Let's go ahead and take a look at this motion right here. I want you to hold that arm right there. I'm only going to use two fingers. Hold it right up. And I'm not going to push him any harder than that. He's having a real tough time with that. How about out to the side? I'd like you to hold that arm right there. Don't let me push it down. Hold. And a little bit stronger. So his deltoids are working fairly well there. We're going to check the supraspinatus. We're going to do an empty can test. So we're going to take that thumb and put it down, straighten out the elbow. We're going to bring that arm right there. And I want you to hold that arm up, and there's nothing there. Okay, so supraspinatus is awful weak. I want you to hold that arm right out here. Don't let me push it in toward your belly. Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. And he really doesn't have much strength there at all. So hold this one. Don't let me push it in. Push, push, push. Okay, and he has much better resistance there. So supraspinatus <coughs> is awful weak. Infraspinatus is awful weak. I'm going to see if I can get him into a hornblower's position here. I want you to hold right there. Don't let me push the arm forward. Okay, that's not terrible. 
That would be teres minor. Now let's check his subscapularis. So we're going to do a couple tests for that. We're going to do a belly press test. So hold your hand up against your belly. Don't let me pull it away. And he can't really hold me there. And he really should be able to bear right down and hold that. We're going to do a bear hug test next. So we're going to go up across your chest, just like this. Hold there. Don't let me pull it away. And I can pull him away from the chest. And now we're going to do a lift-off test. So we're going to turn right around, if you would. And I'm going to have you take this hand and put it on your bottom, just like this. Good. And so he's able to get his hand there. So as I've talked about in the past with the lift-off test, if he just doesn't have glenohumeral motion and it's just tight, well, he won't be able to pull the hand away from the back. So can you pull your hand away from the back? And he cannot do that at all. But let's see if I can passively do it. So relax, let the arm go, and I can passively lift him away. So that means that it's possible, I'll have you turn right around, it's possible that he's also torn his subscapularis. <coughs> um, I'm going to check his biceps next, and as you can see, you notice some bruising here. He's had an old bicep rupture, but recently was carrying a box and probably just bruised that arm. So we'll take a look at that bicep. I want you to hold here, give me some resistance, don't let me push down. And you can see where he's been ruptured in the past. One of the things I like to do if I'm questioning if it's torn or not is give him a little bit of resistance. I'm going to have you hold right here. And then I'm going to take that bicep and I'm going to move it and see how easily I can move it around. So that's a sign that he's completely torn his biceps. Um, and so I'm going to let you go ahead and rest that arm. So no need for me to do a speed test with him. I don't think I need to assess if he has a labral issue because... I think he's torn his rotator cuff, supraspinatus, infraspinatus, and subscapularis probably. And the glenohumeral joint is a little bit rough and crunchy in there. So he probably has some arthritis. Um, so he's going to be off to orthopedics to have an assessment and evaluation. And um, in the meantime, I'm going to give him some isometric exercises just to keep his deltoids in check. Um, because if he does need to get this repaired, with that many tears, you know, and arthritis on top of that, it's possible he'll need a reverse total shoulder replacement. And with that being said, we really want to focus on the deltoids quite a bit and give him as much strength as we can there because that's what's going to be helping to elevate his arm. So we'll be going through some, uh, some isometrics in different positions. We'll work on some postural strengthening, some scapular strengthening, kind of like a little prehab program with him. Um, but uh, Dave, I'd like to thank you for demoing today and for being my patient and I really appreciate that and I know that the people who watch this really appreciate it also because we get to see the real thing on real people and thank you all for listening really appreciate your time uh, if you uh, enjoyed our video today please give us a thumbs up be sure to subscribe and applaud and uh, we will talk to you later thanks